Hi guys, so with E3 around the corner, a lot of gamers have been stating exactly what they would like to see from the biggest hardware and software producers within the gaming industry. As I have already made a video stating what a lot of gamers would like to see at Microsoft's Xbox Showcase this year, I thought I would make another video stating what we would like to see from Sony's PlayStation Showcase. I have summarized what most gamers say they would like to see from Sony into four points. Now, starting with the first point, a lot of gamers want to see new hardware from Sony. Now let's not ignore the elephant in the room. Last year, Microsoft announced Xbox Project Scorpio at E3, a console that is rumored to be way more powerful than the PlayStation 4 Pro. And a lot of gamers have been expecting Sony to announce some sort of response to this console. While I don't really think that Sony will be announcing any sort of hardware that will aim at competing with Project Scorpio, as that is the overall point of the PlayStation 4 Pro, I do do think that they will definitely be announcing new hardware. Another console that a lot of gamers are expecting Sony to announce a response to is the Nintendo Switch. I don't know if a lot of people remember this, but a couple of months ago, it was revealed that Sony had filed a patent in 2014 for a product that looked eerily similar to the Nintendo Switch. So a lot of people do feel that they might be announcing a new handheld console, whether it is a hybrid console to go with the PlayStation 4 or a new handheld device similar to the PlayStation Vita. Nintendo has done very well to capture the interests of many gamers with their hybrid device and it will be interesting to see whether Sony also decides to capitalize on this market. If they do, it may really change the way we see gaming. A lot of people say that the Nintendo Switch is grossly underpowered, so it would be interesting to see if Sony creates something that's a little bit more powerful and whether it will be able to handle more hardware intensive games and what that would mean not only for Nintendo but gaming overall. This very prospect alone makes me very excited for Sony's conference. Secondly, new VR content. Now, PlayStation VR created a whole load of excitement when it was first released in October of last year, and since then, this excitement has kind of died down. Since the release of PlayStation VR, the only time I think people have really become excited for content to use the headset with is with Resident Evil 7, and that was because a lot of people wanted to experience a truly scary horror game with a virtual reality headset on. After Resident Evil 7 though, I don't think a lot of people have been paying much attention to the headset. I was really excited when PlayStation VR first came out. I was actually going to buy a headset but didn't have enough cash at the time. But since then, my excitement has kind of taken a dive. I don't really see a reason as to why I should want to own one and thus haven't bought one. It would be amazing to see Sony announce a few new titles or experiences for PlayStation VR that absolutely makes you want to own the headset. Hopefully this does happen at E3. It would be a shame to see PlayStation VR go down the same path as PlayStation Vita. Thirdly, a lot of people want to see Sony announce new services or improvements to existing services. Now, there is no denying that Microsoft has done quite a bit in bringing out new services on Xbox that seem to be very pro-consumer. A very new service that has actually only recently become available to the public is that of Xbox Live Game Pass. The service is being touted as a cheap Netflix-style game service in which pass holders are able to download selected games and play them as long as they subscribe to the service or as long as the game is available on the service. Although Sony does have a very similar service in the form of PlayStation Now, the service is very expensive and is only limited to gamers who have a very strong internet connection as one is not able to download games and have to stream them. It would be great to see Sony make PlayStation Now cheaper as well as allow users to download games instead of stream them. Sony did recently announce that an overall to the PlayStation Plus service would be made soon, so it will be interesting to see whether this may include PlayStation Now as well. 
spotly footage of new exclusives. Sony has a whole load of new exclusives lined up for PS4 owners and it would be great to see some new footage from some of them. I can say that two games that I would definitely like to see more of is God of War 4 and Spider-Man. Obviously any new announcements with regards to new games is one of the things that most people look forward to when E3 comes around. These are just some of the things people may be expecting to see from Sony's PlayStation Showcase this year. Sony has had quite a few good years with the PS4. A lot of people attribute this to the availability of such great exclusives on the console. However, it is important for Sony to realize that they cannot just continue to rely on the merits of their great exclusives to sell consoles and that they do need to try and innovate by investing in perhaps pro-consumer services or even bringing out new hardware, whether it's to compete with the Nintendo Switch or Microsoft's Xbox Project Scorpio. All I can say is that I hope that whatever Sony has in store for us, it is as exciting as what has been showcased at previous conferences. What do you want to see from Sony at E3 this year? Do you think they already announced some new hardware? Please share in the comments down below. And if you like this video, please remember to subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.